Hello and welcome to Steph K Equestrian. Today I'm going to show you Pickles on her first ever session with handling her feet. I have attempted to pick up her feet a couple of times and she's never really given me the correct response, but in this training session she gave me something that I could sort of work with and shape and so I went ahead and I ran with it and I kept reinforcing different approximations and it went really, really well. When I ask a horse to learn to pick up its feet for me, I'm going to do it in five different steps. Step one is allowing me to touch their leg. They need to be able to do this without walking away or moving or feeling uncomfortable. It needs to be a very relaxed thing for me to be able to run my hand down their leg and touch sort of along their knee or hock and cannon bone. Then I'm going to start to gently lift the leg. Um, if the horse doesn't want me to lift the leg, there could be a few reasons why. The horse needs to be balanced and able to actually lift the leg. So sometimes if they're resting one leg, um, then all of their weight is on another and they're not going to be able to lift it. So as a rule of thumb, horses balance on their diagonal pairs and whichever front foot is further forward. This isn't always the case. There are some different ways they can stand. But typically, if they have one foot in front of the other on the front, they'll pick up the one that's further back, but this one is bearing all their weight from their head and neck, so they might not be willing to lift this one as easily. Um, so if you can't get your horse to stand somewhat square, that really helps keep them in like a neutral position. If they are in an unnatural position, then sort of work with that, look at which foot isn't bearing the weight, and then you can lift that one, and then maybe move them around until the one that you need to lift is not bearing any weight. Also, as a rule of thumb, if they are lifting a hind leg, like resting it, then they're not going to be as balanced and it can be harder for them to be willing to lift an additional leg. So sometimes it's a good idea, just try and ask them to shift their hips over or do something so that that way they aren't um, resting one leg and putting extra stress on the other legs, then they'll be more balanced. Um, usually if they do have one lifted though, they'll lift the diagonal easier than the other two legs. So like if their right hind is up, they'll lift their left front more easily. So um, just play with your horse. If they're absolutely saying no, there is a reason for it. Either they're uncomfortable, they don't want you to be touching or moving them, in which case you need to move back to that, making them comfortable, reinforcing them being okay with you being there. Um, or they have some sort of balance or coordination issue where lifting the foot is going to be uncomfortable. They can also have foot pain. So for instance, um, if you lift the left front, the right front has to bear more weight. And if the right front has like an abscess or some sort of like growth imbalance or something that's causing them discomfort, they might not want to lift the left one because the right one is uncomfortable. And so sometimes lifting the right one and treating whatever is going on will make them more comfortable so then they're more willing to lift the opposite foot. Once they're lifting it, I am going to shape this into something that is like the ideal. They're just standing and lifting. A lot of times they will try to walk forward or backwards. Um, I might reinforce, like if they lift it and take a step, I might reinforce that like once or twice, but anything more than that, and I'm not going to reinforce it because I really want to make this a stationary behavior. Um, I don't want to have to shape them holding still down the road. I want that to be one of the criteria right off the bat. One of the foundations for this behavior is that it happens at a halt. So um, if they need to take a step to get coordinated or something like that, that's okay. But any amount of real walking or backing up or going sideways, anything like that, I'm not going to reinforce that. I'm going to take it back a step, make it easier on them, um, and then work from there. I also don't want them to do anything um, like dangerous or adverse. So sometimes when you lift it, um, on the front end they'll strike or on the back end they'll kick. That's super dangerous. Um, sometimes they do it just for balance. Like I found, especially on the front end, when you first lift it, they sort of jerk at it and like paw and that's totally normal um, but I'm not going to reinforce that. So um, I'm going to try to reinforce before they start pawing so like as soon as it comes up you're getting your reinforcement with pickles and scratches um, but it can be the food, the click and treat, whatever you're doing um, so that you don't inadvertently reinforce that pawing or striking behavior because it only takes a few repetitions of that being reinforced before they think that lift your foot means strike at the handler and that's really dangerous so I do want to avoid that as much as 
I can. Another behavior that we want to avoid reinforcing is over flexing or like hyper flexing whatever we're asking them to lift. So sometimes when you ask them to lift a front foot, they'll like jerk it all the way up as high as they can. We want them to be relaxedly just moving and it's almost more like you're reinforcing them allowing you to move their foot than actually them picking it up themselves because you want to be able to move it around, hold it higher, hold it lower. Um, so if they're lifting it too high up um, or not lifting it high enough, then that's a sign that they're not relaxed, they're not willing to let you move them around and you might need to take it back a step. Um, on the hind leg, this can also be dangerous because if they retract their leg all the way up, that's prime kicking position. So if something goes south, um, like the natural behavior that comes from that is like a stomp or a kick, which can be, of course, dangerous. Now, the way I pick up hooves, and this is on all horses, even before I switch positive reinforcement stuff, just for safety reasons, um, I lift from the cannon bone. So like on the front foot, I'm gonna touch the front of their cannon bone, and I'm gonna ask them to lift that up. I scoop their leg up from the cannon bone with the hoof just dangling off the end. And then I will switch my other hand around the hoof, hold that, and then start picking or trimming or doing whatever I'm doing with the hoof. On the hind end, I'm gonna lift from the hock, swinging the leg back from the hip, and then I am going to switch into holding the hoof and then pick or do whatever I need to do with the hoof. And this is really good because you're able to stay in a slightly more upright position when you start out. You don't have to be bent all the way down to where their foot is, um, which is important for safety if something does go wrong, if they strike or kick or something like that. Um, it's better if they kick at your legs than your head. Um, so it's better if you're not bent all the way over presenting your head in a dangerous situation. Um, wearing a helmet is also really important. You should wear a helmet anytime you're working with like a green or young horse. Um, I should really be wearing a helmet with pickles in a lot of these videos. Um, and that's something I might try to do more in the future. Um, but even with like more experienced horses, um, especially my horses when they're in like a groom stall or any type of confined space where they can't easily just run away from me if they don't want me there, um, I'm going to be really cautious and make sure I'm wearing a helmet because when I'm lifting feet and doing things like that, my head is in a really dangerous situation. So um, part of alleviating that is lifting from the knee or from the hock at first. Then once the hoof is up and I know that they're comfortable with me holding them, then I'm going to switch to holding the hoof so the hoof has nice, like lots of nice support. I also want to make sure I hold it in a balanced way. So if I lift it all the way up, then it's not gonna be as balanced. They're gonna have to shift their weight pretty far and that's gonna be kind of problematic for them. So I try to hold it like low enough that I'm not flipping them over on their side, but also high enough that they're not just sort of hovering off the ground. Um, I find when they can do a full weight shift onto the other side, they're a little more comfortable. So um, there is sort of a balance to it and you'll feel it whenever you're working with your horse. You'll feel if it's too low, suddenly it's like they're trying to drop it or hold it up on themselves. They need more support. Um, if it's too high, they might try to jerk it away um, or be like leaning seriously to the other side or trying to lean on you. Um, and that's the last behavior that we want to avoid is leaning. So um, sometimes when you lift the foot up, um, once they feel that supportive pressure, their instinct is to lean on it. Um, Pickles did try this at one point. I think it was in a session after this one though, so I don't know if you'll get to see that today. Um, but she basically just started to like lay down on top of me. And I was like, oh, that's not good. And so when she started to give too much weight, um, like at her current size, she could literally lean all of her weight on me and I could probably hold her up at least for like a few seconds. Um, but it's still not safe because she's gonna get bigger. So when she does that, um, I just pretend I'm really weak and when she gives me too much weight, then I start to like let go, like I'm gonna drop her. And then she's like, oh, <laughs> human can't hold that much weight. And so then she holds her own body up um, and I just support the weight of the leg and the hoof. So once you've got your horse picking the leg up, then you can start with the actual hoof handling. So usually I don't even touch the hoof until they're comfortable holding the leg all the way up. Um, holding the hoof is also not as supportive to them. And so there are a few tricks you can do with your holds, like wrap your arm around the leg and hold the hoof from underneath. Um, or same thing on the back, wrap your arm around, then you can support the leg a little bit better. If you are comfortable and your horse is comfortable, then you can just support the hoof itself. And sometimes they're able to balance as long as you have the hoof in a neutral place. So if you're lifting it um, too high up, too low down, too far out to the side, too far forward, anything like that, then they're gonna have a hard time balancing so just make sure that they're in a comfortable place then you can begin the handling so you have them picking their leg up you have them tolerating you switching to a hoof hold and then you have them tolerating you picking out the hoof or trimming or doing anything like that 
A few points I'll mention about the training when it comes to this video with pickles. Um, one thing that I want to be really careful about is I don't want to establish a verbal cue too early. I think I introduced the idea of my verbal cue, which is usually either hoof or foot. Um, and I'm really bad about being inconsistent about that. I need to be consistent and pick one and only say that one. Um, but I've had farriers say different things. And so sometimes I just sort of do both. Um, and I want her to have that verbal cue. I want to be able to reach down and sort of touch her leg and say foot um, and have her raise her hoof up for me um, so that I'm not having to physically grab it every single time. Um, I can use like a tactile cue. Some people use a, a tendon pinch um, or a hoof pick tap. Um, and those are very intuitive for pressure release methods because you can start to pinch lightly and if they don't lift it, you can pinch hard and make it hurt and then they know, okay, if I don't listen when they pinch lightly, they're gonna pinch me really hard so I better get that hoof up. Same thing with the hoof pick tap. You tap, tap, and it may not be very adverse, but they know that if they don't lift the foot up, you're gonna tap harder and harder until they finally do jerk it up. So, um, or politely lift it up ideally. Um, so that's more intuitive to like pressure release methods. Um, you can teach the same thing. Um, I usually just do my handwriting down, a verbal cue, um, and then I do sort of lift. Like I just put a tiny bit of pressure, like I'm, like I go down, like I'm just gonna lift their foot up. And um, if they don't wanna lift it, it's not gonna happen because they're too big, maybe with pickles, but I don't press that hard. Um, but with an adult horse, I can lift all I want and I'm not gonna be able to lift their foot without their cooperation. But they feel that pressure, they feel that support, and so they start to lift their foot up nicely. The vet is here for one of my other rescue horses, so I actually have to cut this a little bit short. Um, but the last few things that I wanted to say, um, just get the behavior really solid off the tactile intuitive cues, however you're teaching it first, and then add a verbal cue into the mix. It's really easy. You just say the cue, add the tactile, and then they do it. Eventually when you say the cue, they anticipate the tactile and they do the behavior early. Um, so that's really simple, but I do want to hold back on the verbal cues early on because I want to make sure that hoof or foot means what I want it to mean, not the weird behaviors we sometimes get early on before we have a really solid behavior. You'll notice that I do give Pickles a lot of walk breaks. Um, there are a lot of times where I will just walk away from her and then um, I will call her to me. It gives her a little bit of a break, a little bit of distance, and it's my way of checking in and saying, hey, do you still want to come over and participate? Um, because I want her to have the option if I leave like she can leave and decide not to be trained anymore um, but she's awesome she loves the training so she always comes back which is really really reinforcing for me last but not least there are a few things that i do wrong in this video um, i did traditional training for a really long time and i've taught a lot of horses to pick their feet up with force and so um it is instinctive to me when she tries to pull away to like hold on to the foot and teach her like no you can't run away um, and that's not what I'm trying to do, but there are a couple times where she starts to jerk it and that's my instinct. And then um, I immediately realize and like my mind is able to say, hey, don't do that, even though my body's reflex was a little too quick. So that is not ideal, but it only happened a couple times and I definitely don't think it did any damage. Um, I also have a bad habit of asking for one more rep of the same behavior when we just got a really good one. Um, and really I should end on that. If I get a good one with the left front, I should say good girl and move on to a different leg or do something else for a while. Um, but I'm greedy and so I ask for too much sometimes. Um, but yeah, that's I think that's everything. I'm gonna go hang out with the vet for a little while, but I hope you enjoy the pickles footage. She's very cute. Um, and yeah, enjoy. Hi. We are investigating snake in a can. Woo! Bad vibes! Good girl! Pickles! Come here, sweetheart! Come here! Wiggle finger? Good girl. Ooh, ooh. 
Good girl. Good girl. Oh my goodness, yes. Oh yes, that's exactly what we want. Yeah. Good girl. Good girl. What a good pony. Good girl, what a good pony. Okay. Yeah. Good girl, good pony. Good girl, what a good pony. Oh, you're so good. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl, good girl, Pickles, good girl. Oh, so smart. Good girl. Good girl, good girl, Pickles. Yeah, good girl, Pickles. Oh, you're 
You're so smart. All right, come here, Tickles. You step over here. Good girl. Oh, you're so smart. Oh, you're so, so smart. Thank you. Oh, don't, don't nibble. Yeah, yeah, what a good girl. Yeah, what a good girl. Good girl, yes, thank you. Oh, you are so smart. You are so smart. Good girl. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Good girl, yes. What is the mark, the mark? Oh, my goodness. All right, bye-bye, Pickles. Good girl. Bye-bye, Pickles. Are you gonna follow me out? You gonna follow me out? Yeah. Yeah. I gotta go teach a lesson. Are you gonna come? Come on, Pickles. Good girl. Good girl. Thank you for watching Steph K Equestrian. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, turn on notifications. There's so many things you can click when you're on a YouTube video. Go click all of them. You can also find me on social media, Steph K Equestrian, on Facebook and Instagram, and the Plus Our Purist podcast. Have a great day.